far. Fairy House Plantation. Fairy Plantation. Now we're going to be talking about the Fairy Plantation House. guys and gals and welcome back to another spooky video so this is going to be a two-part series on my first ever actual documented haunted location or haunted house you could say not to get your hopes up but i think this is going to be one of my biggest projects yet now onto a deep dive on one of the most haunted houses in all of virginia Fairy Plantation and its house were built on what was assumed to be Indian burial sites. The house gained its name when a ferry boat ran through the Linhaven waterway in 1642, and the plantation part as well. Kind of self-explanatory. The house was specifically built for Princess Anne II, and the home itself was built on the plantation not too far from the old Donation Church. This church was actually the location of Virginia's only ever conviction of witchcraft, trial by water. The convict, Grace Sherwood, was a daughter to a carpenter and a planter, born and raised in the county of Princess Anne. She was casted upon a cross and dropped into the water. She managed to swim to the shore, which granted her the grand award of seven years of imprisonment. When released from prison, she lived out the rest of her life tending to the plantation and farming up until the ripe age of 80 years old. Her legacy was so legendary she was nicknamed the Witch of Pungo and had a bronze statue of her appointed by Robert G. Cunningham. Fast forward to 1751 when the Walker family built a manor for the third Princess Anne. This was the place of residence for the loyalty until 1828 when the home was mysteriously burnt down. In two years' time, George and Elizabeth Wauke rebuilt the house from the ground up. That is the house that remains on the plantation today. They rebuilt the home for their 17 years old son, Charles Fleming McIntosh. When the Civil War rolled around, Charles and his family, as most functioning families did, partook in the war. Charles ended up being commissioned as the captain of the CSS Louisiana. He later resigned from the military and died in 1862. The home is a three-story manor which has previously housed slaves, soldiers, and royalty. It has been destroyed, relocated, and burnt down completely. With such a long and rich history of tragedy, one can only assume there's some paranormal activity attached, right? The origins of this home's paranormal activity is blurry and extensive, but there is one thing you can say for sure, and it's that this home has many very well recognized spirits and potentially malicious beings that have been sighted and documented time and time again. Now, let's narrow it down to three main entities, Henry, Eric, and Thomas Williamson. This home is notorious for having its lice continuously tampered with by some inhuman entity. In fact, this has become such an issue, it is a duty for employees and tour guides alike to make sure that all lights have been turned off before their shift is over. Even despite these efforts, employees have documented that when tours open once again the next day, lights have been turned on unattended overnight. This is especially an issue on the third floor, in the cooking quarters. was a little boy who was presumed to have passed away from tripping and falling out of a window to his death. The window was located in the conference room. This is also where many encounters with him have taken place. His voice has been repeatedly recognized in EVP recordings, and it's said that if you bring him a toy, he will interact with it in some way. There has also been a little girl described and seen alongside Eric. Her identity isn't 100% confirmed, and she is assumed to be a daughter of Charles McIntosh and died at about age 5, as Eric died sometime after 1850. Several times there has been sightings of the two standing atop of the stairs into the conference room while the little girl was always wearing Mary Jane shoes.
once was a woman named Miss Nash. She had a daughter named Kathleen, and the two would frequent the fairy home. Things began becoming strange when Kathleen was repeatedly stating she saw a man with a beard and a dirty shirt. Things really became interesting when a painting of a previous homeowner, Thomas Williamson, was located and the description of the man the little girl was seeing matched Thomas perfectly, despite the fact this was several decades after his passing. The last known owner of the home, Miss Howron, hired homekeepers to attend to the home while she was out. They have all described paranormal events taking place repeatedly. A specific scenario would happen repeatedly, where they described that an old African American spirit, later discovered to be named Henry, would walk up from the basement of the home and across the living quarters to then kneel down facing one specific wall to the left of the room every time. After several minutes, he would then return back to the basement. It was later uncovered that there was previously a fireplace built into the wall he would always face. It is presumed that he has some kind of unfinished business there. Later on in an EVP session, the withered spirit revealed that he felt content in the home as he felt he quote, had nowhere else better to be, end quote. As well as revealing that a hobby of his is, quote unquote, going fishing which would make sense seeing as the Lenhaven waterway is just nearby. Looking deeper, it was revealed that during the course of his lifetime, Henry stayed in the slave's quarters on the third floor, in the old kitchen. Even after the Emancipation Proclamation was issued, Henry continued living his life on the plantation by choice until he passed away. 